So, um, we are team two and we are focusing on the idea of implementing e-skateboards uh, for alternative commuting. First of all, um, we thought about this idea to this particular group because we are make part, almost, almost all of us make part for the, uh, of the same group. Most likely all of us, um, the mayor, um, majority of us are uh, international students. Uh, we usually don't have cars. Uh, we live in a new city that we actually don't know how it works. Uh, it takes time to know how a particular city works, how it does it, um, there are different factors works in the daily basis. Um, so we actually, and also, uh, we can see we can see the daily pain of commuting here in San Francisco. San Francisco is a city that's packed with cars and has a geographically um, bad part that is that it's only accessible on, on the majority by two bridges. So there is a huge bottleneck in each of them. True. Um, and then also when we think about conventional commuting, the first thing that we that we can recall here in San Francisco is the bar. And for me and I think most of you can agree, the bar is not well distributed. When you see the map of the bar, uh, the, the different lines, most of them go in the same line, so you actually are thinking, okay, so you're losing efficiency in this. You're actually using the same line to take more volume, but you're not spreading well. So, um, yeah. So also, after thinking about bar, you can think about the bosses. But, but what competitive advantage can give you the bus, the buses over the the bar if they cannot uh, skip the regular San Francisco chaotic uh, traffic. So actually, the, the ideas we already have are not a benefit. The conventional ideas we have are not well uh, applied here in San Francisco. So uh, for no. so for example, I want to take a, say a, a particular example of my commuting. For example, I wait. I work in Fremont. And on my way back, it takes me around two hours to come back. But the thing is, not the funny part of the, these two hours is the distribution of it. So from Fremont to the Bay Bridge, it takes me 40 minutes. And then to get into San Francisco to the first stop is one hour and 10 minutes. So that's when you actually can see the cows of entering San Francisco and commuting inside San Francisco. So to start the implementation of our idea, we did some research and then we found this uh, trusted uh, psychologist that says that you actually can't adapt when you're commuting because actually every day it's different. And yeah, you can read it. Driving in traffic is a different kind of hell every day. And it's true if you consider that the, the only way to commute is driving. So um, although this is a, a trusted source, we don't agree with this. And we actually can, we are actually in a city that we can state with examples that we don't agree with it. So here in San Francisco, we have uh, different ways to commute that are new and that are not conventional. Like we have skip, we have the four bikes, we have the line bike, etc. And these new ways to commute provide us a dynamic um, way to commute. And the biggest uh, the biggest part of this is that you don't have to actually wait on a bus stop or a bar stop. You just go find the, the, the dock for the bikes or find the skip it wherever, it, wherever they are in the sea. Uh, this is a better way to commute in terms of dyna dy dynamism, but it's actually not that cheap. The this, this skip, the scooters, for one mile and a half, you just pay like $3, and for, you pay the same amount for a bus, and you can go through the whole city. So. Um, the other advantage of this, of this new and dynamic ways to commute is that you actually don't have to pay for the uh, for the device. You don't actually have to own the scooter, and also you don't have to bear with the risk that we also know in San Francisco the uh, burglary rates are high. So every every time you leave your bike outside, you can. Uh, you can, in the worst, best case scenario, you only get sold in your, your seat, if not the whole bike. So you're actually, not, you're not bearing the risk of owning, uh, uh, yeah, like a transporting device. So we are going to show you like what our idea is actually, what our idea looks like in the real life. 
just 50 seconds. So these days from cars to bikes to scooters. But one of the most fun things to ride with an electric motor in it is an electric skateboard. And believe it or not, the market's actually grown enough over the last few years that some of them are pretty useful now. Especially in cities, you can even use some of these to replace other transportation options. A good electric skateboard should have more than just a few miles of range. It should also be fast, not just because that's fun, but because you need the speed to be able to get around obstacles and avoid danger. It should also be able to stop really well, too. And it'd be nice if it was cheap. So, you have you already seen this uh, uh, electrical skate, and for us, this particular business case is to analyze the, via the viability of, la of launching this new product that we actually think that is fun and provides a, a, a commute that fits better with the Californian lifestyle. Like people and consumer will we engage more with this particular bike. In comparison from this to skip is that if you take uh, from work uh, from work to home you skip, you just feel like a regular basis commute rather than if you take the electronic bike, you will actually feel this short amount of adrenaline that will most likely give you a better mood to get to your home and to the rest of the things you do in, in your life. Great. So now we go look to the data that we collected. We did a survey of 44 students here at Volt. We asked a couple of basic questions. The most important one is, would you like to commute with the skateboards? We also asked about gender, age, uh, your opinion about riding them, and also uh, a minute-based uh, price, if that would be good for you, yes or no. When we look to the uh, gender population of, of, our, of our group, we have 31 males compared to 31, uh, 13 females. We see that uh, the mean and median age is around 25. The mean is a little bit higher because we have an outlier of uh, one person as 39 uh, compared to the rest of us that's mostly 25. When we look to the success rate, and with success rate I mean uh, if people would like to use this uh, way of commute, we see, as we expected before, that from uh, in the light blue below are the male population that uh, would not like to use it, but in the purple is the male population that would use it. We see that 39% of the males are likely to use this way of commute compared to 20% of the females. Of course, it's important to see that we only question 44 people, so this is not uh, very specific. We need to increase our sample size but this is uh, what we got. When we look to the word cloud, and when we see uh, what the reactions were on their opinion and the minute based, we see that one word pops out and that's price. We're all students, it's very important, the price, if it's expensive, if it's cheap, that's what we mostly focus on. But we see also a couple advantages. People mention it's very convenient, it's efficient, and it's cool. And we're all, at the end, still students, and we want to commute as efficiently as possible. Other words that we uh, see as problems is that it's very dangerous. I think everybody can understand that commuting on a skateboard between the cars is a very dangerous way. If there's no paved ways or, or some things uh, assigned to uh, the skateboard. Also, people uh, find that it's very uh, expensive. However, whenever we look, we see also the word cheap popping up. When we analyze this and when we discuss this, we, we think and we see that it's mostly people that don't want to be expensive but want to go for a cheap solution. When we put the same word cloud in a word frequency, we can analyze the same, where we see that price was over 22 times, was picked over 22 times, and all the rest. Most important, the ones that pop out is dangerous, expensive, efficient, convenient, <coughs> and that were the most important ones. Now we'll let's go to the conclusions. So for our final um, business conclusion, we have an assumption that assuming it, for a bigger sample we have the same proportion of results, we, we clearly think that this uh, solution is, is pretty viable. If we attack, for example, the, 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 the weaknesses, for example, our main weaknesses is that it's dangerous, but we believe that once we can show how fun and how different could it be of the, of the solution that are right now on the market if we really educate the user in terms of the, um, the dynamics of the board, people are going to get fun. And we, think we, we truly believe that fun is an important fact for a business idea. And actually here in San Francisco where people is really engaged with different things and fun ways to 
uh, commute to, uh, to their home. Also, we, are, we think that it's uh, viable because people acknowledge that the, uh, that the idea is pretty fun. And even though if we at least have the same pricing or a little bit lower than the conventional things that, we're, that are already in the market, we have this extra that it makes you look cool, it makes you look different than the other people, so people will pay for it. I think that's it, and if you have some questions, let me know. Awesome. Class, any questions? So who's down for a skateboard ride? I'm down. No, I'll be down. But you guys did convince you guys convinced me, which is great, that this could be a possible investment, right? Yeah. Maybe we could open up one more startup to offer these these skateboards and just rent them out. But again, some responders. Some responders said that it's dangerous, you know, they're concerned about the price, they're concerned about the money. If we go to the last frequency chart, the one with all the stop, yeah, there you go. Now, out of the top, let's say 10, what are these that are connected to the price? Uh, expensive. Yeah. And cheap a little lower, I think it's number 10. How about number five? And number one, yes, price, of course, and number five is pay. Yeah. They're all about price, but they don't say, they don't give sentimental. Is it, is it a positive or is it a negative? Oh, interesting. Yes. That's but they good. say that you have to pay for them. Okay, fair enough. So the, what, yeah. the, the, what would happen if I were to analyze the uh, negations? Maybe um, someone would say, I do not want to pay, right? Or I do not want this to be expensive, right? So maybe I would find some customer feelings if I were to include those negations. But yeah, this is great insight. So there's definitely a little bit more to dig into, but yeah. based on this, I know that the price or the payment or the expense will be a huge contributing factor to my business model, right? Opening up the startup. Yeah, I think um, one thing to mention as well is we, we know this price, but we also see that guys are more, more likely to use it. So our uh -huh. marketing campaign would be focused on price sensitive says sensitivity, but also focus towards guys using this wow. in the first stage. That's great. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. very good. I, I, I like that you guys connected this to the initial story, to the business case story. Yeah, yeah. lovely. I that, liked it. Thanks. Yeah.